here's another attack. Back to the book. Scrambling out of the culvert, we set a fast pace up the side of the road to A Company's positions. This immediately brought small arms fire down on us, but by then we were within 200 yards of their slit trenches, so on we ran as fast as we could. Being soaked, I began to steam. My boots squelched and seemed to drag me back, clawing at my feet as in a bad dream and stopping me from reaching the inviting cover of the slit trenches. A Company was dug in with two platoons forward in an orchard face to face with the enemy who were in dikes only a few yards beyond. The third platoon was to the right rear protecting the open flank and company headquarters to the left rear centered on some farm buildings. It was to these farm buildings that we ran. Hurling ourselves onto the straw on the barn floor, we lay panting and gasping for breath. John Acock, A Company commander, appeared round the door of the barn. He looked haggard and worn. I doubt he had slept for a week. The whole company area was covered by the most intense Spandau fire and defensive and the defensive battle here was one of fire supremacy which the Germans had undoubtedly won. A Company's morale was low. They had just lost Harry Barnes, one of the platoon commanders who, refusing to take cover, strutted about in his usual manner. He took a complete burst of Spando fire under the arm. Harry was an amazing and fearless fellow who didn't care a damn for anything. Even after the burst hit him, he still lived for about three hours. The men respected Harry, and with their idol shot down in front of them, they were very jumpy. Another time you have to watch out for morale. Obviously. <laughs> 